All right, guys, how's it going? Well, I'm sure you saw this uh, yesterday, uh, or maybe today, um, doing the rounds on uh, on social media. Um, Liverpool's staggering £168 million transfer bid for Kylian Mbappe um, back in 2022. I saw it last night on social media. It said breaking, you know, breaking news. Liverpool offered £168 million pound uh do a transfer bid or whatever for Kylian Mbappe in 2022 I'm like how is this breaking news it's like two years later do you know what I mean but I guess it was breaking as in it's a new claim uh if you like now this was the 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 content of today's uh newsletter that I typed up for you so I I, I did this this morning uh and uh, as you can see look no adverts as usual with, with the things that I do and um I went into detail uh in the newsletter about this uh, we'll just quickly go over it on here since so there's nothing else to talk about. Um, but if, you, if you're interested in the newsletter, it's completely free to, uh, to sign up to. Uh, all you need to do is, uh, is read the video description of this video or any of my videos and you'll see the link to the newsletter. Just pop your email in and I'm trying to get these out more now. You know, now that the transfer window is closed. So anyway, Kylian Mbappe almost signed for Liverpool, claims Le Quip. Uh, and this is the journalist Loic Tanzi. Uh, he's claimed that Liverpool tabled a staggering £168 million bid for Mbappe in 2022 after personal teams between the player and the Reds were agreed. He claims that had the France international made the switch from the Parc des Princes to Anfield, that there would have been an exit clause in the player's contract that would have enabled him to move to Real Madrid in the future. However, PSG sporting director at the time, I'm not sure which one it was, because from memory... In 2022, I think they changed sporting uh, directors. Um, anyway, the sporting director at the time, whoever it was that dealt with it, informed Liverpool that they would need to double the offer in an attempt to kill a deal from happening and happen. It never did, obviously. Now, Tanzi was the hack. You might remember this towards the end of last year. Uh, that that um, who claimed last year that Liverpool had a chance to land Mbappe if Real Madrid pulled out of negotiations to sign him. It was November last year. And he said Liverpool wanted him when he was playing for Monaco. Klopp went to see him and they were negotiating while they were on the plane. That's uh, John Henry's plane. The relationship between him, Liverpool and Klopp is there. I think they have a chance. If Madrid decides to let him go and they don't want him anymore, I think Liverpool have a chance. And that's, I remember discussing that with you guys at the time uh, and saying similar things to that. Uh, now, most of you will, I am sure, uh, rubbish You know uh, the idea that that Fenway would ever sanction a bid as high as high as 168 million for anyone, uh, but I'm inclined. I'm, I'm inclined to to uh, to believe it, guys. I believe it. I I, I fucking do. And uh, you'll know this if you follow my my videos for uh, for a long time. You know my my feelings about all this. Don't get me wrong. There's been plenty of times when I've thought, nah, nah, eh, eh, I'm a load of shite and all that. But I really do believe it because it was based on a lot of things that we were hearing as well and hearing behind the scenes. Now in 2017. Mbappe had a two-hour sit-down with John Henry on his private plane. Uh, both Henry and Klopp tried to convince the player that he should leave Monaco and make the switch to Anfield, but obviously that attempt was unsuccessful too. Mbappe would later admit that he did meet with Liverpool. Uh, you'll have heard these quotes before on this channel because we went over them at the time. I talked to Liverpool because it's the favourite club of my mum. My mum loves Liverpool. I don't know why, you'll have to ask her. It's a good club, and we met them five years ago. We met them five years ago. Uh, when I was in Monaco, I met them. It's a big club. Now, as you know, Cop Talk sources maintained for years that John Henry was serious about trying to lure Mbappé to Anfield because of what the lucrative association uh, his signing would bring to the club and to FSG's portfolio, uh, would, you know, what it would bring, because of what it would bring. And I think it was more to do with FSG's portfolio rather than John Henry thinking he'll be a great player for Liverpool. Do you know what I mean? Uh, in fact, so determined was Henry to make a deal happen that club insiders claimed that he offered the player a stake in FSG, which would have compensated for the player accepting a lower playing salary. Anfield officials at the time insisted that the club simply couldn't justify Mbappe's huge wage and that it would have caused serious unrest within the squad as Rafa Benitez would say, <laughs> for sure. With players demanding to renegotiate their existing deals, the solution was to offer Mbappe the opportunity to become a shareholder in the company that owns Liverpool. Now, obviously, since that attempt, or attempts, if you like, to land Mbappe, 
Liverpool's ownership has shown no real willingness to break the bank on any other superstar. There was, of course, you know, that shot Casado bid, 111 million, was it? Uh, which was table for him last year. Uh, but many feel this only happened after the shit hit the fan uh, when Jurgen Klopp was allegedly told the club would not be pushing ahead with the proposed deal to sign Jude Bellingham. Uh, a, a, super, a, a superstar Casado isn't anyway. But in other words, Liverpool have never really shown any like kind of clout like that, have they? Do you know what I mean? Um, and uh, I, I wrap this update up by saying Mbappe never made it to Liverpool. And to be honest with you, I don't think I'm that disappointed about it. I'd have loved to have been, uh, to, I would love to have seen such ambition displayed by the owners, but ultimately a transfer would most likely have been more about Mbappe and FSG than Mbappe and Liverpool. Obviously, Klopp would have loved such luxury, but the signing could have unsettled a very happy and tight squad at the time. I'd rather the 108, uh, 168 million was spent on a number of plays that would have brought additional strength to the squad in general, or better still, the signing of Jude Bellingham. And uh, that's basically an overall look at what um, I went over in, in the newsletter today. Um, and I just thought I'd share it with you. Uh, I, I will post that on the members' website today as well. Um, if you want to be a VIP member, that's the best way to support me. And that information is in the video description. Um, but you don't need to be there. The, the, the VIP members website is that one behind me. Um, you don't need to be there because I do. that was all sent out on a newsletter to everybody um, this morning. Uh, and so, yeah, the newsletter is something now that the transfer window is closed, I can grab my laptop, I can go out and I can focus on things. It's very time consuming. Um, but the feedback I'm getting, of course, is is, is very good. And, and the growth is going up quite a bit, quite a few subscribers. And it's like I say, it's free. There's no advertising or any shit like that. So what do you make of that then? I know you're going to get people saying, I don't give a fuck about it, Mbappe. All right, then why are you just, just, just stop. I told you at the beginning of the video what it was about. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, some of us, like, we like to discuss and, and consider and, I don't think many people will believe that John Henry would have sanctioned that or was trying to do it. I actually genuinely do believe it. I do. But I think it was more about getting him on board with uh, with FSG, the portfolio, a bit like they did with, uh, who is it, LeBron and all that, that numpty. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, you'd have had the Mbappe underpants and all that, wouldn't you, and everything, you know what I mean? So, I don't know, superstar, I guess. Uh, what do you think? Do you, do you believe it? I believe it. I do. I do believe it. Uh, oh, let's be specific here. What do I believe? What do I believe? Do I believe it was a £168 million bid? I can't verify that. No one's ever said that figure to me. I've only ever seen that mentioned in the last 24 hours by that journalist. Um, do I believe that John Henry tried to... Yeah, I do. But the player confirmed it himself. He, you know, they went for this two-hour fucking fly around France, wasn't it, or something like that at the time. Uh, you know, so yeah, they did. They, they'd certainly examined it. Um, but it just, I understand why you might struggle to believe it because it goes, you know, FSG don't do that. But this is, this is a unique situation. And, um, you know, Klopp would have been thinking about what he could have done for the team. Whereas I think John Henry was thinking about what he could do for their organisation and the financial rewards of that. So anyway, I still think it's interesting. It's uh, interesting that it's come out now. I'm not really sure why it's come out now, to be honest with you. Doesn't make any fucking difference because it didn't happen. And uh, obviously, if he, even if he had come to Liverpool, the journalist is saying there that there would have been this get out clause for him to go to Real Madrid at some point. And I'm not really sure. I want players that are already thinking about moving before they've come to us. Do you know what I mean? Fuck that off. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I'll leave it with you. All right. Listen, before he caps lock me to death, right? I'm not saying to believe it. You believe what you want. I always say that I'm just choosing to believe that. That's that did happen, all right, or a loosely uh, loose version of that, a little bit different or whatever. But yeah, I do believe it. Um, but yeah, it's the international break. There's fuck all to talk about anyway, so it's given us something to to ponder. Okay, I'm going now. We will be live on here in oh, I don't know what time. I don't even know what time it is. Was a big thing there saying two fourteen. So I'm going to be live on here in. By the time this video goes goes live, I should be live. What time? Two o'clock UK and seven o'clock UK this evening. Um, it's been very quiet this week. You're letting me down. You're watching my videos. You're not coming to say hello to me. I know you're busy, but come and say hello at least. Uh, you know, because if you don't come for a bit, people start to ask where you are. We miss you. Do you know what I mean? We do care about you. Um, so, yeah, do do that. That's it. Oh, I updated the Dunk Knows Best podcast today. 
if you've got a podcast app like Pocket Casts or Spotify or anything like that, just search Dunk, D-U-N-K, knows best. So I just put a new episode out on there today. All right, guys. Um, please thumbs up the video if you appreciate the video. I'll give you something to fucking watch and I have something to talk about. Please do leave a comment. And if you want to buy me a beer or a coffee, hit the super thanks button. That's the love heart under the video. Uh, or read the video description for alternative ways of, uh, of supporting me if you don't want to use that facility. All right, guys, be good. I'll speak to you real soon. All right.